Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, I'm going to tell you all about the NXT favourite who could be set for big things under Triple H. A major update on a couple of game-changing WWE returns. We have the latest notes on a couple of huge WWE face heel turns. And an injury update on Becky Lynch and how long she'll be out for. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm having real difficulty saying the initials WWE <laughs> for some reason. Me, you and Kurt Angle. It's like that other channel. What is it? WWE. WWE. <laughs> this is the news. All right, we're going to kick things off by talking about Triple H, just <laughs> WWE head of creative, if you know, you know. Yeah. Um, Triple H coming in, right? Head of creative, the boy, all of that stuff. Yes. You start looking around the roster and going, hey, this is a person you might push, this is a person you might push, bop, 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 bop. Fightful Slides coming through with the scoop last night. No, no crap, crap, just sat. There you go. I was going to say no poop, just scoops, no. but that's really bad, and I don't know why we keep saying it. Sorry, Sean. Uh, right, Tommaso Ciampa. Or yes! Ciampa, just one, one, one name these days. Um, this, obviously... This report came out prior to last night's episode of Raw, but what ended up happening on Raw kind of backs it up. Yes. So that's cool. Uh, basically, Fightful reporting here that Ciampa's presentation is going to be enhanced. Gonna be, gonna, gonna be tweaked. Good. Gonna be made good, made better. Not that he hasn't been good on the main roster so far. No. You know, the word enhanced means make better. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Uh, he is considered a potential beneficiary of Triple H coming in as head of creative, and that's no real surprise given that Chaman uh, Chamampa. <laughs> Okay, given that Champa was so prominently pushed yeah. during Triple H's time in NXT, he was a Triple H guy. When he left NXT and Stand and Deliver, Triple H came out, arm over the shoulder, all that stuff. You you know the drill. You know what's going on there. Who um, beat there? Oh yeah, Tony D. The okay. Uh, one a part of this might be Champa being positioned in more matches that allow him to show off his in ring ability. Uh, that's going to be part of his new presentation. Apparently, there'd also been talk of him going back to his old NXT theme, but when uh, Fightful published this report, uh, that wasn't yet set in stone. Yeah, I think they should go back to the no one will survive thing. That's a lot better. Yeah. My preference. I, I prefer that. Um, now, Champa has obviously been paired with The Miz on the main roster, and he's received praise for how he's adapted to that, taking the, the creative given to him and just running with it. Like, good work ethic. His uh, demeanor with regards to all of this has been described as great, so he's clearly won some fans backstage. Yeah. And last week's promo, you know, the minute-long thing where he just spat uh, hot fire into the camera. <laughs> that earned a lot of praise as well. So, on Raw, this kind of came to life. We had the United States title series type deal. He won a triple threat. Later, he faced a fellow triple threat winner, AJ Styles, and the winner of that faces Bob Lashley for the US title next week. The winner of that was Champa, profited from Miz's interference a little bit there, but nonetheless, he faces Bobby Lashley next week. Uh, the AJ match was really, 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 really good. Uh, him and Lashley is a fresh, interesting yeah. pairing. Uh, it, it's a total freak show of a match in that it's something I never even would have considered possible no. a short while ago because Champa was always like, hey, I'm, I don't want to go to that, that main roster thing, man. I'd rather stay down here and you know it's, it's better for me and my my injured neck history and all of that stuff you know it's a better schedule uh, but here we are I think this is really cool I think Tom Champa is really cool I think Triple H is uh, doing a pretty fine job so far yeah, yeah exactly yeah Raw was a vast improvement it's not completely fixed by any stretch of the imagination no. there was DQs and things like it that it was the best Raw in months though, without like, a doubt yeah time. just it, I I'm a vibes guy in 2022. Me too. Andy. Vibes and only. So the vibes coming out of Raw Star right ratings now are for losers. Are, are just are just far better than they were months back. And yeah, Champ is the perfect sort of person to embody that. And like you say, he for someone who was like, I'm never going to the main roster. His move up there has been pretty seamless. Like yeah. we've talked before about Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens and the like, kind of working out the WWE system. If you're not a Roman Reigns, you're gonna have to play the game a little bit. And well, he's an association ship with the game association ship association uh, but uh, I I'm really happy for him that oh my god that finish in the in the first triple threat match with Styles and Mustafa Ali and Miz was absolutely yeah. sensational yeah. obviously Champa won the other one then beat AJ Styles as you said I'm really excited him versus Bobby Lashley him getting a big push more than deserved the right sort of guy for Triple H as well and am I right in thinking this title match goes down in Cleveland it does you know who you know who's from Cleveland yeah. right Cleveland, the bear. The Cavaliers. Is there a bear called Cleveland? I don't know. <laughs> LeBron, LeBron James, Cavaliers. Yeah, there, there you go. go. It's not there anymore, but was there 
before. Go Bucks. Yeah. My Milwaukee Bucks, my team. Uh, like the Orlando Magic, and they are terrible, so <laughs> what does that say about me? Well, the news coming out of Raw <laughs> um, was just great stuff going into it and coming out of it uh, last night, because uh, prior to last night's Raw, there was also a really intriguing development around the situation with Sasha Banks and Naomi. Obviously, there's been speculation on this for months since, well, May, since they went bollocks to your tag team titles and bollocks to your show and left, and quite right that they did so as well. Uh, oh, yeah. WrestlingNews.co uh, reporting prior to Raw that um, the former women's tag team champions had reached an agreement to return to the promotion and they were potentially going to be on Raw last night. Now, that, of course, did not happen. But in a Wrestling Observer Figure 4 Online daily update, Dave Meltzer said that Banks and Naomi are, quote, moving in that direction. He was unable to confirm if things had been signed at the time of writing, but he did say that many people in WWE expect it to happen. Um, this is a sensational change, a turn of events. I yeah, think. yeah, it is. And in the, blah, 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 blah. in the original report as well, it noted that even if it doesn't happen on Raw, they hope to get it done in the near future, yes. which is obviously really positive. Yeah, this, this is going to be like such a huge win for Triple H. And it really shows, along with bringing, bringing uh, Dakota Kai back and, and various other bits and pieces that happened at SummerSlam, really shows how much of a detriment Vince McMahon was on the talent relations level. There was no chance, I think, in hell of Sasha Banks coming back no. into that company while he was still there. And with talent relations, the latest fall guy in that role was Johnny Ace. But for me, the rot starts all the way at the top. Vince McMahon had been a colossal detriment to WWE for a long, long time in so many ways. Mm -hmm. I don't care about how, many pro how much profit they've made. I'm speaking from a talent relations yeah. perspective here. So many people are now going to look at that company and go, hey, I maybe want to work there now that may not have considered it before. So many people who were flushed out of the company because they didn't like the creative that came from that man are now going to look at it as a more attractive proposition. So far, it's early days and we're not, you know, don't want to say everything is amazing straight away because that would be jumping to conclusions. But so far, Triple H's reign looks like a huge win. It's not even so much that. It's just getting rid of Vince is a huge yes. win across the board. Yeah, he was an angry Anchor. Well, he was called something like that, actually. But he was an anchor to WWE, in my 100%. opinion. Just slowing them down. And, yeah, arguably the best WWE women's division we've ever seen if we get Sasha Banks and Naomi back. Yeah, stacked. Absolutely stacked. And, uh, look, you know how much, how high esteem we hold both of those in. Uh, particularly Sasha, who is, like, a proven rating star. She's a star. She's great. This is a big win across the board. Honestly, like... This, with, like you say, with the return to Dakota Kai and the new EO Sky form and EO Shirai Bailey, uh, the turns that we're just about to talk about, it, like WrestleMania's card could be stacked with women's matches. Absolutely, it could just be stacked in general. Fingers crossed. Two nights, let's go. Hollywood, isn't it? England, yeah, baby. In, yeah, England. And we're gonna be there. Mate, it's not been confirmed, but I'm manifesting. Yeah, there, Andy. there we go. That's yep. Uh, <laughs> big announcement. On the show, I mean, as well. <laughs> oh yeah, we're on the card. Uh, it's the eel versus the king of the mice. It's, it's the eel versus what well, would be funny? Almost. That'd be funny. Very good. Uh, almost trying to wrestle a toy eel, the big boy. The question is, who'll be playing babyface and heel? Speaking of which. Oh well. Uh, <laughs> eel obviously the, answers itself. But turns. <laughs> the turns that there's not much to this story. Uh, the turns that occurred at SummerSlam. Obviously Becky Lynch going babyface, Ronda Rousey going heel. Uh, that's been rumoured as a WrestleMania 39 match for ages, so you figured maybe that was the first pieces coming into play. Interesting report here from PW Insider, noting that Becky is now listed as a babyface internally in WWE. As you'd expect, she turned to SummerSlam last night. She was pure babyface. Oh, in her great promo, opening promo. Talking about something that you're going to mention in the next story. Um, so that's reflected. However, on the SmackDown side, Ronda Rousey is actually still listed as a babyface inside WWE. Nope. Which to me seems like more of an administrative thing because that was quite a clear turn. Uh, she's also been sus suspended uh, fined. and fined uh, by WWE uh, as part of that storyline. That was announced yesterday. Seems like an administrative thing to me rather than a sign that they still consider her a babyface. But yeah, there you go. There's the deets. Yes. Yeah, quite right. We talked to you yesterday about Triple H making sure that Becky Lynch turned babyface is the right thing to do. It's very rare to see WWE getting their ducks in a row at SummerSlam in anticipation for a WrestleMania match. It's a pleasant surprise to have. And yes, I suspect that it is just an admin thing. Ronda Rousey's heel. Maybe she'll miss Clash at the Castle due to suspension things because she can't be asked to come to the United Kingdom, maybe. I don't know. But also, maybe they'll say, Ronda, you took it too far. You took it to the 
extreme. Ooh. And then you've got extreme rules <laughs> after Clash of the Castle. It <laughs> sometimes does just right itself. Uh, but an update on Becky Lynch and that injury. Um, you may have seen the image doing the rounds of her shoulder looking all wonky uh, at SummerSlam. And yes, she confirmed on last night's Raw that she suffered. Shuff Shuffered. Shuffered. Uh, she shuffered a shoulder separation. A shoulder separation. <laughs> what was that? Uh, it's sort of, sort of, uh, sh not, not Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean Connery, but Sean also Con Alistair Black. <laughs> well, I imagine that tag team. Anyway, she brought out Bianca Belair. She congratulated her. She hugged her. As Andy said, she turned pretty much babyface if she hadn't already at, at the end of SummerSlam. Uh, she told uh, Bianca to hold it down until she returned. Uh, she then subsequently got attacked as she went backstage by Bailey, Dakota Kai, and Io, Sh Io Sky. There you go. It's going to take a Io while, Sky. but I'll get there. We'll get there. Um, WWE confirmed Becky's expected to miss several months due to the injury. And for once, this isn't like... Good. I'm glad that yeah, they're yeah. injured, and they. You know, sometimes I say, "Oh, maybe this is this injury." Is the Not glad the that they're injured. No, exactly. But yeah. Um, you know, get the injury, go away, come back, and then you'll be refreshed. She felt ready to go off on a on a baby face run immediately. It's a shame, but it is right. She goes take some time off to recover, and my word, those returns toward the end of this year and the start of next year, Could Cody, be really Becky. Oh, it's huge for WrestleMania. Yeah, I think th this is a. This, this is a bummer. Anyone getting injured, injured is a bummer, but from a storyline standpoint as well, because it felt like that was ready to go after the Bailey, uh, EO and Dakota stuff at the, at the pay-per-view. Sorry, at the premium live event. Um, so yeah, this, this this is a bummer. But, 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 the division across the board is making moves. Yes. Uh, we saw people like Alexa Bliss and Asuka moved into prominent positions last night as well. So, you know, it's, it's not a catastrophe or anything like that. And all the best to Becky and her recovery. I'm looking forward to having the man Back and big time Bex, yes. uh, not back. Yeah, yeah they just, just a just bored, bored of the character. Personally, me, you might like it. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, get well soon, Becky, and she'll be coming back in a few months, basically. Yeah. Uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions at What Culture WWE. Of course, we want to get in touch with us. Brian George starts us off. Says, hello, gents. What do you think the chances are McIntyre wins the title in Cardiff, only to lose it to Theory the <laughs> same night? Uh, do we think Theory still has a chance with Vince gone? Would McIntyre not leaving with the title just cause a riot? So yeah, McIntyre not leaving with the title would cause a riot under those circumstances. I, I Maybe there's a way they could sell a Roman Reigns victory, but the safe bet, the safe option for WWE is McIntyre wins in the UK. Mm. Uh, I, I Even did, if it's just one of the titles, they might do some shenanigans with exactly. that. Exactly. I did like the commentary team last night. They were like, oh, McIntyre's got an advantage. He's in his backyard. It's like Wales is literally two countries away from Scotland, you <laughs> silly sausages. Gee whiz. Um, the but, graphics on that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Fire! Dragons and eels. That's basically what Wales looks like as well. Yeah, they should get the flatty on there, really. A bit of corporate synergy. Uh, That's Friday's news sorted. Yeah, Theory is absolutely cooked. They, they they geeked him out huge at SummerSlam. He looked like a complete loser in that match with Bobby Lashley. He looked like a complete loser when he tried to cash in in the main event. Um, he's someone like zero and seven since he won yep. the briefcase. Um, the, I I think that I have a better chance of growing a bull head of hair than that man does of successfully cashing in that briefcase at the moment. Um, and I don't think he should cash it in. I don't think he's this surefire megastar that Vince McMahon apparently did. I don't think he's shown anything to suggest that. I think he's quite good at a lot of things, but very good at next to nothing other than, you know, looking really good because yes. he's got a good look. Yeah, um, I, I think he's got potential. I have to try and back him at least because we've I think got, he's got mid card potential, this, haven't we? Yeah. I'm going to lose another bloody sausage roll to this. But for me, I'd just put him on the back burner for a while, at the very least until you separate yeah. these two titles from Roman Reigns, because there's no way he's winning all of the bills. Hell no, not a chance. Maybe, you know, I, 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 what I'd do is, is I still I'm having to have the briefcase, maybe don't do the gimmick of Money in the Bank winner loses all of the time, and just try and make people forget about it for a bit. I think this should be one of those long uh, long briefcase holding. Maybe even to, like, to the point where you're like, You've got like a month left. You really need to crack on with this because right now nobody's buying him being yeah. the world champion. You know, honest to goodness, I would geek him out all the way. I would have him lose the briefcase, put him off TV for a couple of months and then do a refresh because this is rubbish. So what you're saying is what they should have done, Andy, is given the briefcase to Sami Zayn. Literally anyone else would have been prepped. Well, maybe not literally anyone Should have been Sami could have had it on the Stone Cold podcast. Sami would have been really good. 
Because he's such a git. I pick him every year and it never happens. Yeah. Maybe now Triple H is in charge, it will finally happen. Sammy is how you do a detestable runt heel gimmick, by the way. There you there go. There you go, perfect. Uh, Brian Adkins gives us our second question of the day, even if he has tagged Andy Murray and Adam Pacitti. <laughs> it's fine. It's, it's fine. Right. I get it all the time, Brian. <laughs> Uh, he writes, now that Triple H is reloading the women's division, along with bringing back the women's tag titles, how would you feel about a women's intercontinental championship? Hashtag king of the mic. Hashtag heel with the eel. Ooh! I want to do the eel doing it. Ooh! Ooh! Take that. Oh, not the microphone. <laughs> women's, uh, women's IC title. Uh, We've got the tag titles back, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I, I think it would be advisable to maybe wait a little bit. Let the division settle in. Let us find out what's going to be beyond two shows, which is, I mean, really, we're, we're, we're basing all of this on three days, aren't yes. we? SummerSlam to Raw. So, yeah, I, I, mm, I'm not yet convinced that we quite have the level of debt required to sustain two singles titles at the top level, the tag titles, which are presumably coming back, and a singles yes. secondary title as well, um, as much improved as things are. So I would hold off on that for now. Maybe six months from now, if we have this crazy, huge, massive roster, yeah. yeah, maybe then it'll be viable. But for me, maybe a step too far. Maybe yeah. it's too soon. No one, you know, no one is crying out for a mid-card title in the women's division right now. Um, uh, you've got... You know, the, the women seemingly pass around the 24-7 championship right now, which is not a comparison, but no. you know what I mean? There's another title doing the rounds there. Let's sort out the women's tag division first, like you say. And let's not forget, there's not you know, SmackDown has got some great talents on there, but it's not a wash with talent just yet. Just because we've got, you know, three brilliant women coming back into Monday Night Raw, let's not forget that it was kind of thin on the ground, potentially, yeah. going forward of, of the similar feuds. So... I just don't think it's necessary right now. Yeah, hold on. Let's get the tag title sorted first. Uh, final, uh, it's, it's not really a question here, it's just a nice uh, p thing to pose to you from CM Chonk. Ah, uh, uh, legend. Who writes, <laughs> I will know Vince McMahon is truly out of WWE when... Oh, wow. Tremendous. Uh, we no longer hear ridiculous phrases like championship opportunity on television. Uh, Raw was good, really good last night. It was much improved and uh, I really loved the focus on wrestling in particular. Yes. However, we're still using championship opportunity. We're still using WWE Universe. We're still using supers. All these stupid made up words that make these wrestlers sound like they are not human beings mm -hmm. and they're robots reading from this Ray's book of a hundred weird things that Vince <laughs> came up with and they just regurgitate them. Um, when that stops forever, I will know for sure that the last remnants of that man's farcical latter-day creative hand are gone. Yes, I, I'm tempted to agree. There's a bit of me that would, su would suggest I will know Vince McMahon is truly out of WWE when Champa beats Lashley. If that happens, I would not be... Uh, too far away from thinking, think boy, the, things have really changed. You'll be excited about that one. But, yes, it's going to take a while just yet. But we are heading in the right direction. It's been a while. It's been a while. Stained, remember them? Try not to. What are they up to these days? Not much, probably. What, what, do you, what, what do you reckon they're doing? Are they back? Have know. they got the stain out? That's the question. Still <laughs> it bang. That's you, what see, you... Uh, you can see Danny Baker about that one, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, vast changes um, before I believe that Vince is truly... Maybe if NXT 2.0 goes back to NXT Black and Gold, you think, okay. What about, uh, what about Puddle of Month? What are they up to? That's where the steam came from. I've wow. Never a bit like that. You know like the bit in Usual Suspects when he drops the coffee cup? That's what you just done to me. Butt Rock is something else, man. What a genre. <laughs> uh, right, let's move on to today's and finally. I just want to do something nice today, Andy. Uh, a shout out to Donovan Parata on Twitter, who made a lovely sign that said, Simon, give me a birthday up. And he took it to Raw last night and he stood outside and he was forced to stand outside for 30 minutes in the rain. Oh. And he thought, well, don't worry, it'll be worth it. I can get this big sign on telly and then Simon Miller will give me an up on ups and downs for Monday Night Raw. No, the bell ends, took the sign away from him. Screw you guys. Donovan, happy birthday for all of us here at What Culture. I have made sure that Simon has seen this as well. He will give you a mention on ups and downs That'll too. Be a gold nut, baby. But just as a wider thing, Andy, stop taking signs off people when they go to wrestling. If it's offensive, I 100% get yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Or if you think, oh, you know, we don't want that on our, on our screens. 
But my memory of first getting into wrestling, of putting on, you know, a Monday Night Raw from the Attitude Era, was the show opening, JR being JR, and a sea of people with signs there. Some of them haven't aged as well, but this sea of people. Why now is it like three signs and they go, yeah, that'll do. Yeah, it's whack, isn't it? The guy behind me can't see. It, Great! It's, yeah, it's it's so whack. Like, and I, I guess like a counter argument would be like holding it up in front of people when big stuff's going on. But like that seems to me more like a conduct thing. Like, yes. only an asshole is going to hold a sign up in front of someone's face when big thing. You're going to hold them up like during when the camera's panning around and during breaks and stuff. You can have a good time and then you're going to put it down. You're not blocking someone's view the whole thing. So. Yeah, well, this was just a nasty yeah. thing to do, man. Screw those security guys. And, and they're trying to get, like, kids into wrestling, you know, grow their younger yeah. audience. We was When we were at the NXT show, there was a girl sat in front of us, and she had four different signs for, like, Cora Jade and Tony D and stuff like that. She was well happy waving them. And, like, yeah, even my nephew made me a, a sign when I ran a 10K. He was all over it with the glitter. and the, the, it's, No one took that off. No, they? exactly. Just stop doing this. But, yes, once again, happy birthday, I like Donovan. The, and I like sorry the, for... People being bellend. Yeah, shout out to Donovan. Happy birthday. I like the nerd signs that you see these days. Yeah. Like, I don't know any of these games, but like, Dino Crisis is better than Final Fantasy. Yeah. I love that stuff. I love Earthworm it. Earthworm Gym rules. Yeah. Someone can have Cool a... spot, too hot. They. <laughs> Someone took a, when I was complaining about it, when uh, Guevara had the double belts, someone took a, why is he wearing two belt sign? And I just, <laughs> like, every Simon Miller sign I popped for. Hey, so, we, yeah. had a, we had a flatty section signed to Ring of Honor, as we saw last week, so. More of that go. sort of thing, please. Anyway, yeah, happy birthday, Donovan. Uh, let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comments section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And subscribe to What Culture Wrestling, wherever you get your podcasts from, for daily wrestling podcasts. We'll be reviewing this new look Monday Night Raw and NXT 2 but Oh, a little bit of preview for that uh, coming later on today. Also, you can let us know your thoughts and Twitter questions on Twitter at WhatCultureWWE. Why should they can follow both of us? You can follow Andy Murray at... At Andy H. Murray. The H stands for, hey, it's a flying eel. <laughs> it's still moving. How is it? You're not it's, holding it's, it's, it's a light. It's literally an eel. So. It's just left the studio yeah. under its own okay, power. Go at Adam Wilborn, at WhatCultureWWE for all of us. But for now, my thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for joining us. Oh, Mr. Oh! And we will see you soon.